Hi there, I'm Anton. I um, run a little website called Anton's Mindstorms Hacks and in this uh, video I want to show you the latest model that I created. It's a Lego Mindstorm snake and I'm really kind of proud of it um, because of the movement. You already saw it in the introduction. Um, this uh, snake that I'm holding here is built out of two uh, new Mindstorms Robot Inventors kits, so you can see uh, it's got two hubs, but um, it works fine with just one kit. Um, but the cool thing about this snake is that you can actually extend it and add as many kits as you like. I only have three kits, um, so the longest snake I ever made is uh, three long, but I suspect it will work up to five or maybe ten long. Um, 
that's uh, some kind of future project. Um, the great thing um, w w about this snake is that um, the only uh, movement that is uh, motorized is the uh, curvature here and um, it does have some wheels here below but the wheels are not propelled so the wheels are just there to um, provide some sideways friction and some forwards um, ease of movement and then um, because of the this, the sign movement here of every segment um, the snake propels. So uh, let me show you how to extend the snake. It's really easy. It's just um, you can build these kind of modules. Uh, it's like a snake without a head or a tail and you can just insert that in the um, existing snake. So now you can simply add a, another segment by opening up the snake here at the um, brown axle. So there is a brown axle with a stop. I used this uh, stop part to uh, make it easy to uh, retract from um, the model here. And once you remove that axle, oh, I broke a shield, you can just lift off this element here and then um, insert the next element and re-add the brown axle and then here there is a an extra axle and I can add the tail here and there we go now we have it it's a three segment snake and you can go on like this and on and on. What's also really neat is that the movement here is synchronized uh, over Bluetooth of course uh, through wireless communication and the first segment actually um, sets the timing for every other segment but we can also make the first segment a follower segment and um, set timing and everything through a remote control. So the only thing you have to do in order to make that work is build your remote control, of course, and um, instead of running program zero on the first segment, you run program one here, program two on the second segment, and program three on the third segment. Otherwise, if you just want to snake in autonomous mode, um, run program zero on the first, program one on the second, and uh, program two on the last uh, segment. So, um, and if you start the snake, it's easiest if you first turn on the last segment uh, because it will power on and uh, wait for a timing signal from the head, then the second and then the first. And then when all um, follower segments are ready, the first will start broadcasting uh, timing instructions and the whole snake will start moving. The programming of the snake, it involves a bit of math, but basically it's really simple. So let's go over here and have a look at how it works. Also remember to uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more models and more 
programming tips and tricks. Now let's have a quick look at the code here. Um, the code is the same for every um, hub in the snake. The only thing you have to do is change this number here. Um, and I, so this number corresponds to the segment of the snake. I like to um, put a segment, the program for segment one into program slot one and the program for segment zero into program slot zero. That's the easiest way to um, find your programs uh, back. So for this program, I'm keeping a list of all my motors and every time I start it, I clean it um, and then I add my motors to the list. So I'm using segments C, D, E and F here. And then later on the, in the program, I run over every motor in the list and um, make sure they are they run at the right power. And um, before adding motors to the list, I make sure to reset them. And resetting a motor, there's a little a bit of code here that um, reads the absolute encoder and sets the relative position um, to the absolute encoder uh, depending on whether it's more or less than 180 degrees so the relative encoder is set to a number between minus 180 and 180 um, while the absolute encoder is always between 0 and 360 and um, this gives us um, an easy to work with uh, starting position so this is a matter of adding, resetting every motor and then adding it to the motor list. Then here I'm setting some parameters. Um, dampening is um, a number that dampens the wave um, the farther back it gets in the snake. Otherwise um, the wave gets amplified uh, because every um, segment pushes a sine wave and because it's push up and push up and push the tail tends to um, uh, swerve wildly if I'm not dampening it. Um, curvature is zero. Curvature is a number that I'm using for turning so by default it's zero unless um, the um, distance sensor sees something then um, Amplitude is in degrees. It's the uh, number of degrees that the uh, motors go left and right while swaying. And offset is the number of degrees offset between every segment. So the first segment is zero. The second segment has got a 45 degree offset in the sine wave and the third 90 and so on and so on. Um, and the rate here is the number of ticks it does per second. So um, this advances the sine wave. Now, after all these settings, um, I turn, turn on the light. And then uh, here I make sure that I'm, I check in which program slot we're running. So if we're running in program slot zero, we have to send the timer signal to the rest. If we're not in the signal, we just have to listen to the ticks uh, that come over the air in Bluetooth. And so the ticks are again here calculated with the timer times rate. And then um, here we run the power. Let's have a look at this um, more complex bit of the code here. Um, this starts and runs the motor. So that's what it says, start motor add. And um, this blue block starts the motor at a certain percentage of power that is calculated from the current position of the motor. Um, so it's relative position, but the relative position I, when resetting, remember that we set it to the absolute encoder, which so it's more or less the same. It's zero and goes to minus or plus on the other side. And um, it starts the motor depending on the relative position and the position where we want to be. So this is where we want to be. And so you could call this the target. And this is the um, current position. And 
based on the difference between the current position and the target times a certain power factor this turns the motor on so if the motor is where it has to be this um, will turn zero and it won't move if the motor is not where it wants to be it will start at a power dependent on the error so it has if it has to move a long way it will uh, start with a high power if it's almost there it will lower the power but this is um, what the big blue thing do does and if we zoom in on the target here we want the target to um, make the motor um, move left and right so it moves left to a certain point and then right again and then back left or so it it rotates this thing um, if you would put this target on a graph um, then the horizontal thing here would be time or something and the vertical axis let's say that this is the angle now um, if we look at the left and right movement over time it would look something like this so it would move left and right and then slow down and speed up and slow down and speed up and get this kind of movement and this movement over time is also known as a sine wave that's why the sine here is a central element in the formula and a sine wave um, does a full wave about um, every um, 36 uh, 360 degrees so if we feed it three if we feed it degrees over time you will get this sine wave and i decided to feed it about 150 ticks or degrees per second so if this is 150 the right here will be two seconds so it's 300 or two seconds and this will be 450 or three seconds so this is how time is scaled on this axis and then vertically um, i decided to make the motors move from 55 to minus 55 and this number i called it amplitude amplitude so that's actually this number here now amplitude is scaled because um, the next motor um, i wanted to start later uh, let's discuss it later but i also want the next motor to have a bit less movement because otherwise the snake starts shaking a lot because all the movements add up and then at some point the tail swerves wildly so i'm i'm scaling down the movement and delaying it for every next motor so that's why it says um amplitude scale here amplitude scale which is this number and um, motor time calculates the ticks so we already said that we have 150 per second but it's also offset by um, a number here offset which i think is 45 by default and this number is multiplied by the segment we're at so for the first motor this will be zero the second motor this will be 45 the next motor this will be 90 that's what this motor time function does so then we have the offset here and the amplitude and then finally we have the curvature component and the curvature component recenters the sine wave around a different number right now it's centered around zero for a straight snake movement but say um, we want to make the movement um, centered around um, positive number here so 
let's say about 45 degrees if we want movement centered around this number we have to add that number to the sine function here at the end so if curvature is say 40 we would get a new wave that is centered around 40 and if all the motors have a centered center that is offset from the regular center you can imagine that the snake does its movement in a more curved fashion so all of that explains this bit of the code um, and it looks a bit complex but it's actually one of the only ways to make a lot of motors move in harmony um, and that's because also because of the speed of this block this start motor add block um, executes in less than 0, 0 0.1 oh i think it's 0 0.01 seconds so it's really fast and you're able to do a lot of calculations power a lot of motors at the same time um, and the robot still does a more or less smooth movement without shaking too much so this explains uh, the formula i hope and um, i hope it will help you build your own snakes now now finally i want to go into a bit of the history of the snake where it came from this is a prototype that i made back in 2018 when i was working on a catfish and here i was already experimenting with sign moves on motors that push a wheel sideways in order to go forward and then recently i uh, got contacted by um, johan spong who sent me this uh, video of a robot inventor snake and this reawakened my um, curiosity for a snake-like movement so um, for this snake i built on his id and um, tried to find a more snake-like build with smaller wheels that is further extended i paid special attention to the design of the head so that it would look more like a snake with a tongue and all and a beak and i also made the snake more modular in Johan's snake the motors would be uh, put in opposing directions and i put them all in the same direction so it would be a modular design that is also very strong um, that doesn't break apart if you pick it up in the middle and i also reinforce the shields in the final design so they don't don't um, break off as easily okay this concludes my video about uh, this multi-segment robotic snake. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe. I really like, uh, like it if you subscribe. It's part of um, the reason why I'm doing all this. So um, you can really support me by that. And um, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.